Hi guys and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory we're going to be talking about drag and the various types of drag and what it entails. Now there are two types of drag, parasite and induced. And if we check out the little chart here we can see drag on this axis over here and V, also called speed, on this bottom axis here. So this essentially is relating to the faster we're going what happens to the drag, to the various types of drag. First of all, induced drag is dependent on the angle of attack of the aircraft. It's essentially pilot induced. Now, if you can visualize the aircraft, the faster we go, the less angle of attack we require because we need less lift because speed will replace lift in our formula to maintain us in the air. So the faster we go, the lower that induced drag will be because we're pitching down. If we slow down the aircraft, we need to pitch up slightly to maintain that altitude so we don't drop to maintain our lift. The other type of drag is called parasite drag. Now this has various subforms which I'll go over in a minute. Now parasite drag, as you can see here in green, increases exponentially as speed increases. Now what other types of parasite drag? We have form, skin friction and interference. There are the three subcategories of parasite drag. So form drag, as you can see in my little crude sketch there of an aircraft, form drag is just down to the shape of the aircraft. Of course, if you imagine a square block flying through the air, that's going to have a lot more drag than an aerodynamic bullet, for example. However, a bullet still has some form of form drag due to its shape. So this is the shape interfering with the air. That's form drag. Now, skin friction, there is a layer of air in contact with the surfaces of the aircraft, and that actually generates drag because of the resistance on the skin itself. And that's skin friction. Now, the last one is interference drag. Now, interference drag comes from any sort of interference the aircraft creates as it's flying through the air, such as wingtip vortices, for example. So as lift is generated, there is a sort of spiral of air coming off the back, which generates a lot of drag for aircraft. It can also happen as air separates from the wing, as it heads towards the trailing edge of the wing, it'll separate and create a turbulent boundary. That creates a form of interference drag. So interference drag increases, because of course, the faster we go, the more of all these types of drag will affect the aircraft. If we are standing still, there will be none of these. Now, as you can see, I've drawn a total drag curve here in red. And you'll see there's the lowest point, which of course coincides with where the parasite and induced drag curves meet. Because that point right there is the point of lowest drag. Now, that point right there, the lowest drag point, also coincides with a lot of other points. So it's also LD max, what's the maximum lift to drag ratio, and on a jet, the endurance, best angle of climb, and best glide speed also coincide very closely with that minimum drag speed right there. Now, talking about best endurance speed, associate endurance with time. So best endurance speed will be, how can we stay the longest in the air? Well, that of course is going to be when we use less fuel, which is going to be at our minimum drag speed. Best range, on the other hand, is the speed at which we want to get maximum distance out of that aircraft with the same amount of fuel on board. So as you can see, the bottom of this total drag curve is relatively flat. So we, with a little increase in speed, as we can see down here, a little increase in speed, we have a very small drag penalty. So that is our best range speed because it allows us to go a little bit faster, even though we're burning a little bit more fuel, but we will get a further distance on that same amount of fuel. Now, you all know the number pi, 3.14, etc. That's the way I remember this graph, weirdly enough, because I remember pi, P, I, in that order, from up to, up to low. So, when I need to remember this graph, I draw the graph, I draw my x in, and I just write pi, parasite and induced. So I know my parasite is increasing, my induced is decreasing with speed. Hope that helps, guys. If you like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. All the best, and until next time.